Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and today I'm reviewing the Marrakesh Camels and Nomads expansion. This is an expansion to Marrakesh, Stefan Fell's game from Queen Games, part of the City Collection, one of the new titles. It's not one that's been redone in the City Collection, but it's a new game entirely from Stefan Feld. And while normally in expansion reviews I try to give you a bit of an overview of the base game, Marrakesh is a game that's hard to give a uh, simple distilled overview to without really getting into it. So you, you can check out my other full video on Marrakesh, it'll go into it, how the game plays, give a bit of an overview there, as well as, of course, my thoughts and opinions. For context, Marrakesh to me is a 4.5 out of 5. I really enjoy the game. I think it's a fantastic point salad combination. One of Stefan Fell's better titles, in my opinion, and I think is one of his newer new titles, I guess. But uh, to give you a general idea, the most distilled possible version of Marrakesh, in Marrakesh, you're going to be dealing with Keshis. These are these little Keshis over here. You're going to be dropping them into a tower and using them, drafting them to your board to drive your actions. There's a whole bunch of different areas on the board that you can use as, I think there's 11 different types of Keshis, well, 12 if you count the wild one. And you're using those Keshis to power all kinds of actions to try to improve your tableau. All these different crisscrossing from moving up tracks to managing a little mini rondelle to gathering your economy and to trading them in for goods. There's a ton of things to do, but they all weave together very nicely and they all give you opportunities for clever play in Marrakesh. Again, very, very light overview of that game. As far as the Camels and Nomads expansion, first I'm going to tell you what the Camels and Nomads expansion adds to the game, and then I'll go through my thoughts and NPNs on each of the various modules I think it adds, and of course a final rating on the expansion. And to that end, the first thing it adds is, well, Camels and Nomads. Two separate expansions amongst many others. The Camels is likely going to be the biggest change to the game, and the Camels is going to give you this entire racetrack over here, where you have these little Camels racing along the racetrack. You're going to be crossing various bridges different points paying the cost to cross. You're going to be getting benefits for being for crossing these lines as well as additional benefits for being the first to cross these various lines. And you're going to get points for crossing this finish line as well as points for whoever finishes highest in the race, 16, 8, 4, or 2. But not only that, every single round, whoever's furthest behind the leader, by these various tracks over here, you're going to see how many white tracks there are behind the leader, and they're going to take dung tiles for that, and those will have a point penalty if you don't find ways to get rid of them. So not only is it giving you a way to get extra points and extra things, it's also giving you a penalty if you are too far behind the leader. As far as how do you advance on that track, you advance by spending cashies you would otherwise have spent on other things. Those little tokens you would have spent on other benefits, you can instead put them into these tracks over here to move your camel up that many spaces. Well, not entirely that many spaces. It's a very specific number. You get to move one for the first cashy. Once you put a second different color cashy, you get to move two. A third different color cashy lets you move two again. Then a fourth different color cashy lets you move two again. And when you get to the fifth different color cashy, you get to start moving three. So there is an escalation. There's a little chart in the back of the wheel that you can check out, but it'll let you move further and further up track as long as you have different colored cashies slotted into this area. But again, keep in mind, you're inherently giving up the various benefits those cashies would have earned you in other places in order to advance on the racetrack. Now, when you spend these caches over here, you're going to be placing them onto the board, and at the end of every round, you have the opportunity to trade those caches in for a variety of benefits that will be on this tile that will be changing every single round, giving you different trade in benefits. So first, you spend the cache to move up the track, which will be helpful. Then you cash in those caches for additional benefits. So even though you are giving up something in order to place those caches there, you're still getting various benefits back, and then you can continue that cycle. Very often, if you're trying to focus on this track, you're going to spend a bunch of caches to move up. You'll spend a few of them to cash in each round, giving you space to spend more to continue moving, and spend that little cycle of trading in and then cashing out as you can to be able to get as much as possible out of the uh, camel's track over here. The Nomads expansion adds these little blue caches over here. Every round there's going to be a Nomad cache to purchase from the pool. To take the Nomad cache from the pool, players have, to have the opportunity to, dra to grab it, and those Nomad caches go onto your player board and they effectively count as a wild cache with the additional benefit that you can spend resources to move that cache to different areas every single round. Very often in the base game of Marrakesh, many areas will reward you for having having more cashies in different areas. And this gives you a cashie that can wander around constantly boosting your numbers in different areas at the cost of spending money to move them around from location to location. So you do want to be mindful of that as you're going through the game. You want to be mindful of the resource allocation of these, but they give you a wild cashie, one that can help you in a variety of different ways. And so these are going to be a uh, key, not as game, not as game changing as the camels, but it's going to be a big expansion that gives you, well, additional cashies to use, additional ways to get them onto your board and to power up your own tableau. Those are going to be the two 
modules that have the name of the expansion. But there are a bunch of other things as well. There's going to be these additional tiles over here that are going to be the food provisions tiles you have to pay for every round. In the base game of, of, of uh, Marrakesh, you have to pay resources every single round in an escalating cost across the three seasons of the game. You have to spend more and more resources, otherwise taking a point penalty. These give you tiles that you have to spend even more resources. The traditional tiles, the easy ones, have a point penalty of three, I believe, if I recall correctly, and they're going to give you, uh, they're going to have to spend three resources to do so. These, cost four or five, have a higher point penalty, and so if you're like, why in the world would you want those, that's fair, except they're going to give you benefits as well. These are going to give you additional benefits in the game, so you're going to get additional benefits, uh, you know, over here when you get these tiles, and over here is an ongoing benefit. So for example, over here, you'll be able to move up the uh, temple track over there, on the black side over there, get to move that up, and over here, once per season, at the beginning of every turn, you can go ahead and swap in one Keshi for a different color. And again, they obviously have different abilities all the way through over here, so different things you can do with these tiles over here, but all giving you different things, different benefits you can get in exchange for the fact that you have to pay that higher upkeep cost. And so, again, it's a module you can add in. You'll take one basic, one medium, one hard tile, mix them into your game. In theory, you can do whatever variation you want as well, but that's just the recommended one. And this will give you an additional way to have a higher cost of maintenance, but with an additional benefit in the game. Then you're going to have these goods tiles. I mean, new goods tiles, some for the racetrack over here, and others just general goods tiles over here. And these are going to give you additional things you can get. So, for example, they have a much higher cost, but they give you more points. And this one will also let you activate one of the three people area on your little disc that you have in the game, giving you additional benefits. So they cost more resources, they give you more points, and they give you additional benefits. So it gives you a new bunch of goods tiles you can mix into your game. Similarly, you have the various uh, oasis tiles as well. These, again, giving you more oasis. So, for example, this new one over here is just even from the expansion, which gives you four points for every uh, for every Nomad Keshi you have on the board, maximum 16 points if you have this oasis tile. So again, more oasis tiles, some of them that interweave with the new elements of the game, uh, they're going to give you more variety to your gameplay. Then we have two more things to go over. We have these tiles over here, which these are going to be your starting building tiles. And what these do is they give you different benefits. They determine starting resources you're going to gain. So you gain different starting resources, giving you a bit of a leg up in the game. But then also you have an ongoing benefit that the tiles are going to give you as well. So, for example, this tile lets you start higher on the river with your boat whenever you start with this. Whenever you have this tile, you start higher on the river. These are basically asymmetric bonuses you give to each player so that each player has a new thing that they can do that's different than the players as well as additional starting resources in the game. So, a little fun things there. And then the last thing we get is a solo expansion. So, if you want to play America Solo, we have this board and these and these are all going to be the solo expansion for the game, giving you a, a way to play America if you don't have other people at your table. That's going to be what the expansion has, which let's go ahead and start off with my thoughts and opinions and all this stuff, starting from, I guess, least to most impactful for me. The least impactful for me, personally, is going to be the solo expansion. I have not played the solo expansion. Marrakesh is not the kind of game I would play solo as much. I find I very much do enjoy solo games, but games that are more competitive, multi competitive multiplayer in general, I tend to prefer to play those as competitive multiplayer games. So for me, the solo expansion, just not going to affect me that much. It might help you a lot. It's very good to know about it, but it um, doesn't really impact me much. As far as the uh, moving up from there, the small, again, least to most impactful, we have the additional good styles. Additional goods and additional oases, that's just a nice little extra variety to mix in. Doesn't significantly impact the, extra, the, the, the experience of Marrakesh much. Uh, the oasis tiles are nice because they mix in the new game elements. But again, those are just nice to have, but they're not going to make or break anything for me. The main elements you have over here are going to be the nomads, the camels, the uh, building tiles that give you ace match bonuses, and then the provisions tiles, which give you new ways to do things. And there, from least to most, I'm actually going to say that the camels expansion is my least a favorite module to add into the game. The Camels gives you a lot of stuff going on in the game, but I don't know if I felt that it improved the experience so much as giving me variability to the experience. So I like the fact that the Camels expansion exists, the Camels module exists, and I do think it's nice to have. I think it's a different way to play the game, but for me, I kind of find Marrakesh to be a tight puzzle no matter what, and the trade-off of one more place to spend my caches in a different area, I don't know if I felt it was as rewarding as I would have liked. It certainly adds strategic aspect, and I think it does add variety to the experience. If Marrakesh was a game I was playing a lot more, I think I'd benefit from it a lot more. As it is, I don't think I'd be playing with the expansion, the Camels expansion, quite as much as the other modules, just because it's a lot of it's a lot of additional extra rules when you're teaching new players, and I don't think it made the experience better so much as it made the experience 
it's different, at least for me. So not a bad thing, not a negative, but frankly speaking, I think it's going to see play le the least often from the various modules that are here. From there, we have the provisions. The provisions are a nice little extra thing. I think that there I'm a little mixed. I hate paying extra resource costs, and that's not different here, but I do like getting extra bonuses. So if you don't think of it as an extra resource cost so much as a pay to play, an initial, hey, get a few resources are gone, but you get something out of it, they are a nice little extra flexibility. And again, those are nice. I would imagine I'd use those most of the time. They're a nice little additional uh, variety and module without a too big of an impact to the gameplay, while giving you some degree of asymmetric bonuses going on. From there, the Nomads expansion is going to be my next favorite thing. The Nomads are a nice little additional variety. You can use them, you can not, you can completely ignore them and it won't really change your gameplay, or you can take advantage of them and try to slot them into your board, gaining as many bonuses or improved tracks as you can. The, the cost of them is not overly punishing. It requires a little bit of extra resources to get them and to move them around, but I think the Nomads expansion is a nice touch to the game without being game breaking in any way. For me, by far, my favorite expansion, that is not the name over here, the name is, uh, you know, Camels and Nomads, but this to me is, is I mean, this is worth the price of admission, which might be a little too harsh. I mean, these things are not cheap over here. But my favorite part of this... Um of this expansion by far are these asymmetric player powers. These just give you more resources to start with and more things you can do with the game. And I love doing more things in games. I like the fact that there's just more. This isn't a punishment, this isn't a penalty, this is just more stuff you can do, things you're better at, and more resources you get. I like that, in, in, I mean, this is this is amazing. These uh, give you tons of different abilities, little ways to uh, adjust your gameplay, different things to focus on, getting goods cheaper, or whatever it is they do, they all get you give you a, a competitive advantage in a different area of the game that is very satisfying to try to find ways to take advantage of that in combination with the provisions in combination with the game in combinations with what comes out of the tower those to me are easily my favorite part of the of the game experience in general of the expansion experience in general as far as rating on the expansion for me, the expansion rating is going to come in at a 4 out of 5. The base game to me is still a 4.5 out of 5. To me, I, I rate expansions based on what they add to the experience. And the Nomads is definitely, the Camels is definitely a big change. If you like Marrakesh a lot and you're playing it a lot, I think it is a big impactful change to the game. But for me, it's not variety. It's For me, it's not better. It's just variety. Versus the others all add a little bit of quality of life to the game. In particular, my favorite easily, like I said already, is going to be the starting powers. But then the combination of the full package of what you get here, I think overall is an expansion. I'm giving it a 4 out of 5. I should also note that if you do, regardless of which version of Marrakesh you have, whether you're using more of uh, the, uh, the cardboard tiles or the full wooden Keshis, this expansion has you covered in both cases. It works well with both, so if you're wondering which version does it work with, this one works with both versions. And that's your review of Marrakesh Camels and Nomads. I hope you found this review helpful. As always, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co., and I hope you have a good one.